Hello again YouTube. Um, I wasn't actually expecting to make a, a video tonight, I wasn't planning on it, but um, I've just uh, got to the end of sort of a two hour long comic grading um, sort of session and uh, kind of need some time away from staring at meticulous details of comic books to uh, just take time to talk about comic books. So uh, maybe I do need to do a little bit more with my life at the moment. But anyway, um, I'm, I don't have any new books to show you as yet. Well, I have one or two, but I'll uh, I'll leave them until the others get here, and then we can do a proper proper full-on video with all of them. Um, I do have some really exciting new Silver Age stuff um, on the way, which uh, which is going to be great to show you guys. Um, so sort of stay tuned for that coming up in the next uh, in the next video. But for now, um, I've decided to um, have a little talk about something else. Um, I also say now that. Um, my videos hopefully um, will start to look a little bit different. Um, my my comic book collection videos will stay the same. I'll be sort of holding a shaky camera and and wittering on in the background and and showing you what I've got. Um, but my videos like this, um, where I try and explain something about the hobby, or I'm gonna start doing more sort of historical videos and bits and bobs of information. They might be a little bit more scripted. Um, and I'm going to try recording my voice properly. Um, we've actually got a bit of a home studio going on here because my uh, my new flatmate's a fellow musician, and we've got tons of recording equipment and stuff everywhere. So, um, and I've done a lot of video editing um, at university and things as well in the past. And um, you know, I might try and step up my game a little bit and try and turn it into a, a proper produced um, sort of series. So there's that coming up as well. Um, for now, back to the old school way of uh, just holding this camera and making you all feel nauseous. Um, but I was going to show you something that I've um, I've been working on over the last couple of days, and um, it's to do with if you see my last video on how I catalogue my collection. I use this Excel spreadsheet, so I won't go over the whole thing again. But um, what I've done is add um, a couple of new columns, and again, I really apologise in advance if um, if the lettering isn't coming out clearly. I don't think there's any way I'm going to get that to come out particularly clearly. I'm um, just filming it like this. That's part of the reason why I'm going to start producing things properly. But um, I've started taking the whole buying, selling and, and investing thing a little bit more seriously and I'm trying to make that my focus at the moment. And so with that in mind I've, I've added some new um, information on, on um, this spreadsheet so I can keep tabs on what I'm doing a little bit better and um, most of, well all actually, of my investment grade comic books I've purchased through eBay and some of them I've sold on through eBay as well and the nice thing about that is that eBay holds on to your um, records for, for a couple of years so um, I've managed to go back and dig out all the important information um, so what I'm going to do um, if you've seen it before, uh, my, my spreadsheet, basically I've got the, the title of the comic book, um, the publisher, the issue number, um, the year, um, the condition as, as graded by myself, um, any kind of important bits of information, whether my copy is CGC graded or signed or the first appearance of a major character, um, the book's value, um, and that's based on current um, overstreet value rather than anything else. Um, so it's just sort of an indicative value. And then a, a, an image of the, the cover, just to make the whole thing a little bit more interesting and makes it a bit more easy to identify. So I've added these new columns in now. Um, I'd be interested to know what you guys think. So I've added a date purchased column, um, which as you can see this is a work in progress. A lot of this isn't filled in yet. So there's a date purchased column, so when I actually bought the book. because. You know, I like to think that I'll still be doing this in 10 years or you know, 20 years, 30 years in time. Um, and it'd be nice to, you know, th things are going to change, um, inflation and, and demand and everything else. So it's probably a good idea to start uh, documenting you know, when I do these things. The next column is the advertised grade. So um, it makes more sense if I go on to the next column. So this next one is um, what I paid for the book. And the important bit is this includes shipping. Because if I'm actually looking to make any kind of money out of this, I can't ignore the fact that if I bought a book from America, it might have cost me 10 or $20 to actually get it here in the first place. So you have to lump that in with the, um, 
with the, with the actual end of the auction um, value of the book itself. Otherwise, you're just kidding yourself because you're saying, "Oh, I made ten dollars on that book, but it it cost me twenty dollars to get it here." So, you lump them together, swallow the figure, and just accept that's what you paid for the book. Um, so, the advertised grade then becomes important because when I paid twenty one dollars for that book, um, I paid twenty one dollars under the assumption that it was a very good. Um, so it just helps me clarify why I did certain things um, and why certain things might not tally up. And I might know to not to use that uh, seller in future because you know I might have two or three books I've got from them and I've graded the books a lot higher than they advertised them. So then the final columns are um, the dates sold. So obviously if I buy a book and then sell it on five, ten years down the line, um, I'll know to look out for sort of whether or not that book's gone up over that period of time. It just makes the whole thing a lot easier to document. Um, the sold price, uh, so what I actually sold it for, and that's obviously without shipping because um, I, the shipping added on top of that, I will have spent on the cost of actually shipping. <laughs> so, um, and then finally, um, a profit column, which I might rename something else, um, but essentially whether I've made or lost money on that book, hopefully made. So um, just to give you an example, um, one book which I think I've populated at least most of the columns for um, was a copy of Amazing Spider-Man um, 583, whenever I come across it, here we go. So this is the, the Barack Obama um, variant cover, the, uh, the more valuable one. So. I've graded out to show that this particular copy, because I've actually got another copy in my collection now, but I've graded out this one to show um, show that it's gone. And so um, we've got the usual columns, it's Amazing Spider-Man, Marvel, 583, um, 2009 was when it was uh, issued. Um, I graded this copy, uh, when I had it, at a near mint plus. It, I remember it being a fantastic condition book actually. Um, first print of the Barack Obama variant cover. Um, current overstreet value is $48 and this has gone down recently over the last few years because there was a lot of hype about this book when it first came out uh, a lot of hype about Obama um, and the value has actually since gone down but that's not as important because the book's been bought and sold now and I actually sold this book on when the hype was still quite high so moving to the next column um, I haven't populated these dates yet but um, the, I bought the book in I'd say early 2009, um, and I, if it had come out by then, maybe it was late 2009, anyway, 2009, um, it was a, um, I bought it under a, a near mint, or a 9.4 grade advertised, so it's actually, in my opinion, it was better than advertised, um, and I paid, you probably can't see that, but I paid $65 for it at the time because as I said there was a lot of hype about the book and you might say that I'm mental for paying that now but at the time you know that was actually fairly reasonable um, so then I can move on to my next column and say when I sold it again I haven't populated this yet um, but I sold it um, in the I would say I must have bought it early 2009 and sold it late 2009 I'm sure uh, that's how it works um, so I went travelling and then I came back and I uh, I'd sell a couple of books to make a bit of money. So um, I sold the book in late 2009 and um, I actually sold it for $84. And um, that meant that I made a nice little profit of $19, which doesn't sound a lot. But, you know, I had to sell the book anyway. So the fact that I made a bit of money on it is fantastic. And uh, obviously I lost money. I'll, I'll probably put that figure in red. And if I've uh, gained uh, money on it, then I'll put it in uh, in green. And then obviously I can do various things with Excel to work out, you know, overall how much I've uh, I've made or lost across my collection, and just um, it's going to help me monitor my buying and selling habits. If I see that I'm routinely paying too much of certain books, um, then I'll know to kind of clamp down on that. And um, if I ever want to take it a little bit more serious and actually really start trying to make some regular money out of um, quickly flipping books, things like that, then. Um, this will be a really useful tool to have. So it's a bit of a pain to kind of go through all of my um, the books I've bought in the last couple of years and, and put all the dates and, and figures and stuff in. Um, this last column is not going to be too bad because I haven't actually sold that many books. Um, but you know, once it's done, it's done, and then it's just a case of keeping on top of it after that. 
So, um, yeah, I hope you found this interesting. Um, it's a little bit of a, an obscure one, but um, something that if you guys buy and sell, um, I would really, really recommend doing something like this and, and making sure you keep tabs on um, on all of your buying and selling habits because sometimes, you know, you'll buy your books and they'll sit in the boxes and uh, and then you'll sell some of them. And, and if you went back through your records, you might suddenly realise you've actually not been making any money at all on them or you've been you've been paying way too much on your shipping fees and haven't really noticed and then when you've gone on to sell them you've been losing money hand over fist every time so um, good thing to do but uh, anyway as with uh, everything to do with comics um, it also ought to be worth noting that, that um, they're things to be enjoyed and it's not all about the money <laughs> so uh, I don't want you thinking that I'm just seeing them as some kind of commodity um, I do love the books and I do read them but uh, this is a useful way of, you know, keeping tabs on your on your finances. So um, anyway, if you could um, like the video, if you do like the video, um, subscribe to my channel. I'm bringing out videos all the time now. As I said, the uh, the production level is hopefully going to go up from now on, and I'm going to do some interesting new topics. I'm going to start talking about CGC, I think, in my next video actually. Um, and as and when I get new books, I make new videos about those as well. So uh, yeah, leave your comments below, and uh, until the next time, I will see you later. Bye.